Hello, everybody. Can you hear me in the back? Do I need to speak louder? Can you hear me in the back? Wave if you can hear me in the back. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, jiggle your jewelry if you can hear me in the, in the front. Okay, great. Um, and then, uh, ku ku I'm Noel, um, or Noel, or Nonek. Uh, I have three names. Uh, two of them are because I'm a Gemini. Um, so if you've heard the, my spiel before, uh, I will give it. Once again, um, we are using this wonderful uh, tool called Slido. Um, it's been donated by Slido uh, for us to work through all these different roadmap sessions. Uh, it's a really cool tool that enables us as event organizers to uh, do surveys and to uh, uh, gather your questions throughout the event. Um, and so Darshana, who's over uh, to your right, uh, is the Slido master uh, for, the, for the event. Um, so she's going to be controlling Slido. So if you go to Slido, S-L-I-D-O, and enter in the hashtag roadmap underscore civic hall, that will get you to the Slido portal. Any device made after 2007, which is an arbitrary number that I've selected out of my head, uh, will be able to access this uh, wonderful website. Uh, and, and the Slido will evolve, and I will talk about the different prompts. So the first prompt is that it's a demographic survey. We just want to understand who's coming to these types of events. This is our third event that we've had. Um, uh, and so we're kind of rolling through this. And then uh, we're going to switch from the survey to the question and answers. Um, um, and feel free to ask whatever question that you have um, uh, as I'm talking. Um, Darshana will either answer it or she'll say, no, I'll answer this question uh, and we'll answer the question. Um, seeing how uh, it's a fairly small, intimate audience, I think you can also, if you don't want to do the Slido thing, uh, do the Hando thing, uh, stick it up in the air and uh, wave it like you don't care and I will yell and ask for you to uh, talk. Um, otherwise, there's this Wi-Fi thing. It's pretty ubiquitous um, here in this place. Um, the passcode is empathy118. Um, so uh, we're, we have a lot packed into these uh, two hours. Um, we're going to do some introductions and a call to action. Uh, we're already four minutes behind. Uh, then we're going to do a, a breakout into discussion groups. Uh, then we're going to have a report back. And then the evening will end. And I think there's been uh, already a motion on the floor uh, for a gathering afterward. So um, imbibe as freely as you want uh, in ideas. Uh, second, or the first thing that I want to say is thank you, Internet Society of New York. Let's give a round of applause for the Internet Society. Society of New York. Woo! Uh, the Jolly is over there. Uh, the man who his back is turned to me. He's not offensive like that. He's just controlling the internet right now. Uh, and he is live streaming at this very, very moment. Um, so if you go to bit.ly forward slash roadmap underscore civic hall underscore video, uh, you will get the live stream and you will also, that's where uh, kind of like all of these proceedings will uh, exist. So if you have to duck out a little bit early, uh, uh, you can quack uh, catch up um, later uh, at that URL. Second thing we want to give a huge th shout out to is to Civic Hall. Thanks, Civic Hall. Let's give them a round of applause. Woo -hoo! Uh, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this event for free here uh, if it wasn't for Civic Hall. They have generously donated the space uh, for us to use it. So uh, think of this as your living room and clean up uh, after yourself. Uh, we have last week, uh, yes, last week, uh, we put out a call for ideas for our annual conference, NYC School of Data. Uh, we call it so data uh, as the colloquial term. Um, so if you go to this other amazing bit.ly, uh, bit.ly, uh, bit.ly forward slash so data dash 2018 dash ideas, uh, please be mindful that the S and the D are capitalized. Um, uh, that's a submission form. We're looking for lightning talks. We're looking for panels. We're looking for workshops. Uh, essentially, the sky's the limit. Um, the orientation around these ideas are around the subject matter that you see in the room. So uh, we're, we're, this is the second year that we're going to be using the people's roadmap uh, as kind of like our guide. Uh, uh, we're really open to anything. Uh, if you have like a really, really creative, artistic uh, proposal, we're totally open to that idea. Um, uh, we have secured a date and a location 
location. So March 3rd is the date. Uh, we're not sure whether or not we will be two days on Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday. We're exploring different options. Um, so if you want to do classes and kind of like petition for workshops and classes on Friday versus Sunday, let us know. Uh, this is really just right now uh, a whiteboard of ideas for you to submit them to our organizing team and for us to be thinking about that. And now the members of the organizing team. So these are our facilitator, facilitators for the evening. Uh, we have Ashley in the back. Wave your hand, Ashley. Uh, Alex, who helped check you in. Where's Alex? Hey, Alex. Uh, he's still over at the check-in desk. Uh, Benjamin, who's in the far back corner over here. Uh, Darshana, who's our Slido master, and myself, Noel. Um, so what we're doing this evening is that we're going to help facilitate this conversation. Uh, uh, we will guide you down the road map, um, or down the road, um, and we're going to be governing this evening through our code of conduct, and if you're interested in the code of conduct, we have another lovely bit.ly that you can go to. Um, uh, it's bit.ly .ly or bit.ly forward slash beta NYC dash C O C. Um, so uh, now for the meat and potatoes or the tofu and the wooden stick. Uh, we are here to uh, meet your neighbors and make your voice uh, be uh, voice heard. Uh, today is a national day of action uh, at Verizon stores. How many of you know about uh, the protest for net neutrality? Okay, so um, uh, there's been a national day of action. Currently, uh, you could be at a Verizon store uh, and yelling and screaming uh, for pro net neutrality, or you could be here in this room. Uh, and Ashley has made some lovely, lovely postcards uh, that we're going to hand out now. Uh, um, yeah, okay, uh, great. So the facilitators are going to be coming around and handing out these postcards. Uh, the bit.ly that's here, uh, beta for uh, net neutrality, uh, is a, if you are so interested in sending this postcard, which pretty much says, I love the internet, uh, please don't, uh, uh, please don't, uh, please let net neutrality uh, uh, be the thing that it is, right, which is what we have, right? We don't want to roll back the system. Um, uh, all you have to do is go to this URL, uh, uh, which is the EFF's website. Uh, the EFF will, you put in your address and your zip code, and it'll tell you uh, your two senators and your uh, congressional official. Uh, we want to... Uh, uh, we want to send these postcards to your congressperson. Um, so the two senators are going to be on the top, and the congressperson is going to be the third one on the bottom. Uh, and really, uh, we want you to just put their name, um, uh, and we will make sure that it goes to their appropriate uh, 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 office in Washington, D.C. Um, because Congress and these types of postcard writing things are a little particular, uh, we ask that you actually use your home address, uh, the address that you're putting in uh, to make sure that it goes to the congressperson and that way the congressperson registers you as a constituent. Um, uh, otherwise, they might uh, throw out the postcard like uh, the FCC threw out all of your comments if you didn't make a legal argument. So um, who's interested? Yeah? Yeah? Cool. All right. Um, does everybody have a uh, pen? Who needs pens? We have, we have many, many pens. Um, And if you're wondering, once again, if you're, uh, who is the elected official, the congressperson that you want to send this message to, uh, you go to this bit.ly uh, uh, beta for net neutrality. Uh, that will take you to the EFF's website. You enter in your address uh, and your zip code, and that will give you your congressional represent representatives. Uh, and we want you to uh, ideally select the congressperson that's there. Um, or if you want, you can, you know, 
you can hit up one of the senators. Um, if you are interested in sending this digitally, um, that website that you're going to um, will allow for you to submit a, uh, a digital representation of this postcard too. So we'll just spend five minutes. As long so is uh, um, uh, as long as you're typing in the right address, it your home address is going to go to them, and this is the idea that you're supposed to be sending a message to as a constituent. Um, so and digital versus paper. Um, uh, yes. So uh, in in the. Um, uh, dealing with elected officials, um, they prefer you to show up in person. Um, the second most powerful thing that you can do is to actually hand write a letter. Uh, and uh, they take that with greater weight than postcards. Um, uh, and then telephone calls. Um, and then the least weight, the least weighted object out there is an email. So, uh, which is why we're trying to weight this conversation just a little bit by uh, pre printing some postcards. So, So for those of you who are just coming in, we're, we're uh, doing a little bit of a postcard writing campaign uh, for net neutrality. Um, um, so uh, this little website here, there's some postcards. Um, this is Ben, who's standing up with the white shirt. He can give you a postcard and a pen uh, if you're so interested to, to send a postcard to a, um, a congressperson. Um, so that way you can exercise your voice um, on today's National Day of Action. Uh, for net neutrality, um, and uh, we, as Beta NYC, will um, actually collect the postcards and we'll put the postage on them. Um, so please don't feel that you need to take them. We actually want to do a count of how many people are going to be sending postcards, and we'll turn that into one of our fun little metrics that we'll put at the end of the year of how many people have been sending postcards. This is something that we're doing for the very first time. So um, we're trying to be an all-inclusive uh, activist organization. Cool. Yes? Oh yeah. Uh, don't worry about uh, looking up the address of your, uh, the address of your elected official. We just want the name. Uh, so put the name of the uh, elected official that you want to send it to, and we will put the address. We'll make sure that we put the right address on there, uh, and that uh, you have the appropriate postage. So uh, we'll try to make it simple for you, or as simple as possible. Cool. Uh, all right. How do you feel about me moving on and introducing the roadmap um, as you uh, continue writing? OK, great. Uh, how many of you have read the People's Roadmap? Uh, just by a show of hands. A few, okay, that's okay, it's okay, it's totally fine. Uh, it was written four years ago and I started re rereading and I was just like, gee whiz, you have a typo right there in the first sentence. <laughs> So um, uh, the People's Roadmap uh, was put together back when Beta NYC was just reorganizing. Uh, we had for many years been known as the uh, uh, open, 
OpenNY, um, we were, we are still a meetup. Um, and at that time period, we were transitioning from um, being just a group of people that met infrequently to really focusing our efforts. Uh, we had rebranded ourselves from OpenNY uh, to Beta NYC. Uh, and we wanted to build, uh, uh, to go through a community building exercise. Uh, it was fortunate that then Rachel Howe, the chief digital officer for the city of New York, was doing uh, their final uh, digital roadmap for the city of New York. It was Bloomberg's final digital roadmap. Uh, and they were going out and doing five uh, listening tours and going to all the different boroughs and finding out what people wanted to essentially see in their future forward. You know, wouldn't it be cool if the next administration works on this? And we said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if the things that they don't include, we include in our roadmap so that way we have something that we can hold the next administration um, and the next city council and say, hey, we want this. We want to set some priorities. So through that exercise, um, uh, we ended up generating uh, a community manifesto, uh, which is kind of like the long-winded version uh, introduction of uh, what the people's roadmap, uh, f that frames the people's roadmap. Uh, and then we came up with 34 different proposals. Uh, out of those 34 different proposals, 14 of them were taken by city council members and gone through the drafting process and introduced to the floor of the city council. Uh, so 14 of those different ideas actually turned into pending legislation. Not all of them were passed, um, uh, just Last week or the week before that, we got two new pieces, two new uh, additions uh, of uh, two new laws. Well, hopefully they become laws. Right now they're sitting on the mayor's desk and oddly he hasn't signed them and they're significant updates to the open data law. And it's just a little odd that the mayor is just sitting on these pieces of legislation when the administration was supportive of these pieces of legislation. It's just a little particular right now. It's a little unusual. Um, so we were able to generate nine new laws over the last four years, really strengthening and solidifying the city's open data program. Uh, and then we've also turned and generated uh, nine public-private partnerships, uh, places like Civic... C Civic Hall is one of them, right? A co-working space. How many of you had gone to co-working spaces uh, over the last 10 years? And they were like, great places to go work at, right? Now, uh, how many of them had a civic orientation? Very few of them. Now we have Civic Hall, and Civic Hall is going to have a place on 14th Street if they get go through the ULERT process, which is the Unified Land Use Review process. Uh, they'll have a nice, wonderful, big building uh, where many civic startups can call home. Um, what we were able to get uh, out of the, the People's Roadmap is the city record uh, online. How many of you know the most important newspaper that you've never heard of? All right, one hand, woo -hoo. Uh So the city record online is, uh, for those of you who are geeks, it's the city's change log. Anybody know what a change log is? It's essentially the documentation of the things that have changed from day to day. Um, and it's the most important newspaper because that's where all procurement intents, uh, procurement uh, announcements, uh, and then procurement awards um, have been uh, published transparently. It's also for salary decisions. So essentially, if a city employee gets a bump in raise or gets a bump in salary, uh, if they get fired, it's put into the, the city record. Um, it's also the, the complete listing of every single public meeting that the city hosts uh, for you to go kind of attend and, and, and say something to it. Um, and that was one of the first pieces of legislation that we were able to get done in the last four years. Um, and we have to thank Ben Kalos for reading the People's Roadmap and saying, hey, this is a fucking great idea. Uh, let's put it up there. We we're also able to work with Ben Kalos to get the city. Um, uh, and then so the city record joins the city charter uh, which the we had another piece of legislation that was put out there that gets the city charter in a uh, downloadable format. Uh, previously, before this legislation, you were able to go to the city's law office and type in, and you're like, oh, I can read this. Okay, cool. That's my law. 
cool. That Those are my laws. This is what governs me. And it just kind of sits there in the browser. You weren't able to actually take that, put it on your computer, scrape it, mine it, do whatever you wanted with it. You didn't have the access to own it. It was actually owned by a for-profit company. New York City's laws were owned by a for-profit company uh, that the city essentially licensed to. Uh, and we weren't able to download it. And so in the last um, four years ago, we were working with Ben Kalos and he said, hey, you know, you should be able to get bulk access to that. Uh, and so now you can go to the city's law uh, uh, law office website uh, and there's a nice little thing that says, oh, download New York City's charter in XML. And then now you get the, the city's laws, the city's charter, uh, the rules, uh, and another great program that we were able to get uh, started um, through the city's roadmap is our Civic Innovation Fellows, which is a partnership with the Manhattan Borough President and Beta NYC. And so we, how many of you are community board members? Raise your hand. How many of you have attended a community board meeting? Raise your hand. Okay, cool. Uh, um, so we're working with the Manhattan Borough President to figure out how to bring community boards into the 21st century. Uh, we have uh, Emily, who's in the back, who's in the white. She, uh, she works. In, uh, she's the director of our fellows program. Uh, we have four classes that we offer to uh, Manhattan community boards. Uh, we launched this tool with uh, community boards called BoardStat, uh, which is a 311 dashboard. Um, it's the first ever 311 dashboard that lets you see kind of the issues within a community district. Uh, and we have a whole education program. So we were able to generate, I mean, these things are kind of like bureaucratic and, you know, policy oriented and very nerdy and very wonky uh, and don't aren't sexy because, you know, you don't really make a lot of money off of them. Uh, but we we're able to change and reform and improve New York City government over the last four years. Um, and just two weeks ago, kind of like the wonkiest of the wonk wonk, um, uh, is a legislative API. So Legistar went, w was this uh, website that you could go to, owned by Granicus. Um, and this is the canonical location of all pending and past legislation in New York City. You could see how city council members vote for it. And for many, many years, we have been asking for an API. There was even a session four years ago, Ben Kalos, first year, he was like, he challenged Gran Granicus in a very public setting. It's just like, give me an API. And Granicus said, give me the money. And we we're like, but it's the people's laws. Like we shouldn't have to give you, we're already giving you hundred thousand dollars a year. Like why do we have to pay anything more to, to get programmatic access to our, our legislation? Uh, and four years later, uh, through a lot of hemming and hawing, a lot of handshaking and begging and begging and begging and begging uh, and a whole lot more begging, um, we are finally able to have an API uh, against the city's legis legistar, which is all pending legislation, past legislation and actions that are going on, uh, legislative actions that are going on within New York City. Isn't that cool? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, both. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you want to look up like pending legislation, so legislation that's been drafted, that's been introduced to council, that hasn't necessarily made it even through the committee hearing process, you can find the, those pieces of legislation in Legistar. You uh, quietly, in this update, they pushed out email notifications, um, which is, yeah, woof. High technology here. Uh, so now you can get email notifications and you can subscribe to keywords. Now the cool thing is two years ago, David Moore uh, and uh, uh, David Moore and our friends DataMade uh, out of Chicago were able to put together this thing called Councilmatic and they were doing this. They were essentially scraping Legistar and putting out an API. And now we're pushing council to work with uh, the Councilmatic team so that way the all of the data is in a really clean format uh, because right now Legistar is in its proprietary format and there's an open format and anyway we like geeky stuff and this is a really geeky win uh, and this now joins kind of the arsenal of the city charter the city rules the city code um, city record online and Legistar and I saw two more hands yes Are there any that are sort of emblematic of 
what really needs to happen that we should be thinking about now or anywhere emblematic of what the city really doesn't want us want to give us, you know what I mean? So either to sort of understand better the city logic or the mayor's logic, like with your curiosity, like why is it not signing the same way? Uh, so yeah, uh, so we kind of four years ago we just we just selected these different topics. Uh, um, they they kind of like came out of um, Code Across, which was a, a, a big citywide event, uh, and then we were kind of gathering these different ideas. So education and lifelong learning only have like three uh, pillars. One of them is to promote I Zone, um, and we consider that a win, um, but we don't necessarily it doesn't fit in somewhere in here. Um, Right, and and some some of them are like um, uh, in the create uh, smarter, wiser communities. There's something about like creating an office that's modeled after the Seattle Department, which um, New York City has this thing called Mayor's Office of Community Affairs, which could be more innovative in its outreach and its and its um, production, um, but it doesn't and so w the the kind of like the gray matter between the two are ideas that were kind of like really futuristic um, that uh, it would be cool to have um, we really we were just kind of like piecing these things together uh, and now we're realizing oh wait now I think we can maybe have a smarter uh, proposal, uh, like a more direct proposal, instead of just being like support these different types of agencies or like stand up a whole new agency. Um, we forefronted um, the the last roadmap with freedom of information, uh, uh, new laws around freedom of information, which we haven't gotten, um, though uh, we haven't gotten as laws, but we have gotten as kind of like um, new programs so the city has unified its foil process um it's put one agency in charge of the all uh, uh freedom of information asks um and kind of like they're well they're not putting it as legislation they are taking action on it um uh, we asked for a we the people petition site that didn't uh, actually come about though that was drafted as legislation so there's like these little things that were maybe um, novice ideas that we thought about four years ago that if I look back I was just like wow that was that was childish maybe we can rethink about this um, moving forward so um, you'll if you read the the full and we're uh, if you read the the city the the roadmap you'll see that uh, these are some of some really big ideas um, and we want those big ideas. We want to, you know, see maybe they can happen eight years from now. Um, but let's start, you know, like at least let's just throw them up there. Um, there was Alex. Yeah, I know. Uh, can I can I just do one more one one, one more question? Did, who, did you have a hand? Oh, I was going to ask about how to use the Legistar API, but I found the information. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so I want to get to the breakout session. So Slido, we, to do this process, uh, we are going to be using a number of tools. Slido, uh, there's going to be a, there's a Google Docs note taker who's going to be uh, uh, taking notes at the very end. Uh, we ha you have this tool called uh, talk.beta.nyc, um, which is where we'll be asking you to submit uh, ideas after the event, and then YouTube. Um, we're going to, uh, YouTube as a tool, um, uh, this is where we're going to be recording this uh, presentation and sharing it out. So these are the primary tools that we're using for, for the uh, series of workshops that we have. Uh, right now, we are starting these in-person workshops um, in the fall, uh, and then we're going to be moving to an online engagement using talk uh, and then in the spring of next year 2018 um, next month uh, well in th three months from now um, we will start the collaborative writing process uh, we want to be using these roadmap sessions to inform us of what school of data will look like as well as um, the our immediate advocacy that we're going to be doing with the new city council that's going to be coming in. Uh, we will get a new city council speaker um, uh, sometime in the middle of January, and that's really important because that's going to set the legislative agenda. And so we want to be thinking through what are the ideas that we want to be bringing to that new city council speaker uh, to hopefully help set the agenda as well as set the city's budget process. Um, and this is all governed from the idea that we firmly believe in a progressive New York City where technology 
technology fuels opportunity, inclusion, engagement, efficiency, and innovation. Uh, and this is kind of like the ethos of the 2013 roadmap. Um, and they are framed around uh, four digital freedoms. Uh, we took uh, FDR, uh, FDR and Eleanor's uh, four freedoms and modified them for the 21st century. Uh, the four freedoms are at the foundation of the um, International Declaration of Human Rights, as well as the foundation of the UN Charter. And we said, well, what would be the kind of like the 21st century version of that? Um, so we have the freedom to connect, which, as we have defined it, um, is access to high speed bidirectional internet. Internet, um, which fuels kind of our society, which is currently under uh, 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 being threatened. Um, freedom to learn, which is the access to information, knowledge, code, data, and tools, as well as access to those institutions, uh, regardless of gender, identity, language, age, faith, or class, are essential to an empowered citizen citizenry. Uh, freedom to internet, which uh, freedom to innovate, which is that we need laws and policies that uh, that not only protect us, that pro but provide opportunity um, and uh, enable us to defend the commons uh, and able to keep us growing. Uh, and lastly, the freedom to collaborate, which is that uh, that the I the idea that part participatory democracy is realized by increasing peer-to-peer -peer social connections between all individuals and social groups. Uh, and so we're going to be breaking things out into the five topic areas that are surrounding you in this room. So the here to my right, your left, is accessible infrastructure. That's right here. Uh, and then right over here to its right that way uh, is, uh, is education and lifelong learning. Uh, further behind that um, in the far uh, area uh, is industry, employment and economic mobility. Um, in the back, um, kind of where, uh, next to the doors that you came in, is effective and open government. Uh, and then um, back behind you um, is smarter communities. Um, to define what these things mean, Let's see here. Uh, uh, accessible infrastructure is access to affordable wired and wireless bi-directional high-speed internet access. Education and lifelong learning is the idea that unprecedented access to knowledge and learning opportunities. Let's make sure that everybody has a chance to learn. Uh, industry, employment, and economic mobility. This is kind of a catch-all, uh, but it's access to the tools and resources that provide for an adequate standard of living, a living wage, and meaningful work. Um, effective and open government is transparent, efficient, and participatory government. And smarter communities is the integration of technology with community needs. And so the five uh, facilities facilitators uh, that uh, will help and walk you through a process. Um, so uh, accessible infrastructure is here to the left. Uh, education and lifelong learning is on the other side of the stage. Industry and economic mobility is um, behind over there. Effective and open government is close to the glass doors. And then in the back corner over here next to the lockers is uh, smarter communities. Um, and how we're going through this process is that we're going to do two cycles. Um, the first cycle is that we want to define the vision um, um, we want to define uh, what is the thing that we're seeing now. So what does accessible infrastructure mean to you? Uh, what, what is this, what, what, what are the most current relevant issues that you're seeing within accessible infrastructure, right? You know, Link NYC, or is it privacy around Link NYC? Uh, is it the means to a network computational resources because no one has mainframes in their, in their house? Uh, what is the internet as a common uh, carrier because everyone deserves access, right? So what are the things that you see relevant to that particular topic at hand? And the facilitator is then going to do some quick grouping to kind of like orient the, the group of you the, um, as you're discussing that particular idea. Uh, and then the second activity, so, so it'll essentially look like this, you know, like we'll talk about um, in the context of accessible infrastructure, there will be some ideas around ethics within accessible infrastructure, there'll be some ideas around smart cities, um, and so there'll be some grouping, and that's the type of mind mapping uh, that will first go on within the, the first part of the breakout session. And then in the second part of the breakout session is that we're looking for is proposed solutions. These are your grand ideas, right? Everybody gets a drone, and that 
drone is ubiquitously connected to the internet somehow, um, and 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 you're going to go from there. Um, so, or maybe you know, it's like fiber links to everywhere. Uh, this is your opportunity in the second half of the of the workshop is to really think through what are the things that you think are relevant, and that could be put into the the people's roadmap. We're then going to synthesize all of these different ideas and then put them up on talk, uh, and then allow for the public online debate to happen um, uh, in the in the coming months. Um, so how close are we? Oh, look, I've got 10 minutes. Oh, I can do questions. Um, so uh, we're going to be, this is the, the breakout session uh, and the facilitators that we have. So because I'm the only one in the group that seems to understand accessible infrastructure. I'm going to be doing infra accessible infrastructure. Uh, Ashley is going to take on Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Uh, Ashley is going to take on education and lifelong learning. Industry, employment, and economic mobility is going to be Alex over there. Um, we have effective and open government is going to be Darshana. Um, so Darshana's here. And then she's going to be taking in the back. And then Ben is already over next to the uh, smarter communities. Uh, we really didn't know how many people were going to be showing up tonight. So um, this is going to be kind of like a free for all. We're going to need to figure out some load balancing, um, if you know what I mean. Um, so maybe I could just do like, like a, a raise of hands uh, just to see if I can do some uh, quick count. Um, yeah, for each. Uh, no. Yeah. OK. Oh, he's going to talk first, no? You have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, not for you, for Ben. He's the one who's going to be doing smart communities, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. OK, okay. all right, <laughs> great. All right, um, so uh, just a real quick uh, poll. How many of you are interested in accessible infrastructure? Raise your hand. Raise them high, so that way I can, I can see them. OK, four, five. OK, great. Uh, how many of you are interested in education and lifelong learning? Raise your hand. OK, roughly around five. How many of you are interested in, uh, let's see, industry, uh, employment, and economic mobility? Roughly around six. OK, uh, effective and open government? Let's see, what is that, like eight, almost 10? OK, great. Uh, and then smarter communities? Ooh. All right. And then uh, who didn't raise their hand? OK. Uh, um, do you, do you want to, do you want another? Is there another? No? Okay, great. Uh, it seems like we hit, we hit everybody, uh, um, equally. Uh, does anybody have questions? We'll take, we'll do some, we'll do some open questions now. Yes. So for smarter communities, like what, what does the city, do they have some programs uh, to guide maybe let's say so for me I, I, I start working on this app that I built and published to help uh, people maybe we'll get to details later on to, to give people uh, the opportunity but after that I'm clueless like I don't know uh, do they uh, give you opportunity to meet like-minded people uh, to take that uh, idea or app from just being an app to actually a civic startup um, especially that it is supposed to be a nonprofit, and you know, as you, you might know, there isn't a lot of people investing in nonprofits. So, does the city help uh, in that in any way? You mentioned also that they're gonna have like a co-working space for civic startups. So, do you know any information about? So, uh, y yes, I, I know some things, but um, so you know about big apps. No. no? Okay. So then um, I guess how I would take that big question is I would divide it up into two things, right? One is uh, what are the issues? Okay. So the, the, you want to identify the issues, which is that you want some better understanding of what are the resources that are out there right now uh, right. to help you develop your idea, right? Uh, so, well, you, so you put that as a post-it note. Uh, and then... Uh, on the second side, you propose a solution, which is I want the city to help guide me through this process to develop those types of resources. Uh, okay, so this is basically helping me in the process. Um, 
my question is, let's say, so I had an idea and I already built it on an app, right? And I want the city to help me get it from just being an app to an actual thing that is gonna help people, that is gonna grow, that is gonna have the, the, the needed resources to actually uh, keep going. Yeah. Um, so you so put that down as a post-it note for the, for the proposed solution. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Like you want that help, right? Right. You want that as a solution. Right, so then you put that down as a post-it note for a proposed solution. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 okay. Great, other questions about this process? Jolly, j j no, Jolly, Jolly is, is um, there are people on the internet that wanna hear you. The people must know. Uh, what does smarter communities mean? Ooh. Uh, okay, so uh, smarter communities is, um, every community is smart. There are no dumb communities. And so when you use the idea that the smart cities is the, using a language that's inferring that there are dumb cities. Uh, and so when we say that we're gonna bring smart city technology, it's inferring that, that this is a dumb city. And last time I checked, uh, residents in their neighborhoods tend to know what are the issues better than others who don't know their neighborhoods. And so smarter communities is the idea that we are all smart in our own way, shape, or form. We all know our issues, and we just want to make them smarter. Um, there's another term that's out there called or wise communities, and so we want to make our communities more wise because we are latently have the wisdom of our neighborhoods, and we just want to make them filled with more wisdom. So it's a critique, huh? Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, hey, um, Emily, can I have you go around and collect the post uh, postcards before, uh, before we break off into, into different things? Um, great, what other questions uh, are out there? <clears throat> How did you pick these five areas? Uh, so when we were doing our first roadmap, there were, um, the language is a little bit of a mix of what the city had organized its verticals on and then what we identified um, uh, as a community that these are the verticals that we wanted to frame the number of issues that we had. So it w they were, they were community-oriented, community-derived, and they're up for redefinition. Jolly, behind you, to your right. So for the proposals, um, how much of it, how, what's the process for actually getting this enacted, um, both from like a legislation perspective, um, private-public private partnerships, um, what happened after 2013? So what happens after the proposals are kind of put on paper? Um, well, uh, so Beta NYC is a mission-driven organization. We believe that a technology data and design can be used to improve the lives of everyone in New York. Um, where we see alignment with some of these issues, we're definitely going to uh, embrace them in our advocacy. Uh, we hope that all of you can see this as um, those proposals reflected in this roadmap and we would then collectively champion them. Uh, we hope to see this roadmap as something that we can go, that you can also go to um, city council members or to relevant mayoral offices, maybe even uh, state representatives or representation and say, we would like to see these types of programs uh, uh, enacted. Uh, we haven't fully thought out how all of these ideas or the new ideas would be uh, put together because this is more of a, a visioning uh, uh, framework. Uh, but we're open to figuring out how um, we can be smarter in the next four years and making sure that certain issues are turned into uh, advocacy campaigns and that we get certain things uh, uh, done. Um, so, yeah. Uh, any other question? You, you asked one question. You, you, you're going to be any, is there any other question? I'm going to let you ask this, this last one. Okay, uh, Andrew, right here with the Code for America uh, track jacket. Same guy as before. That's another brief question. Uh, can communities be, for smarter communities, does it mean geographic or could it be based on nationality like immigrant community or religion? Uh, what kind of communities are we talking about? 
so shoot here where is it freedom to collaborate uh the the quick the quick answer is uh as uh, if you go the definition that we use to the freedom to learn um is that um uh, essentially uh, regardless of gender identity language age faith or class um so you can think through as um, communities bisecting every single one of those things. So it can be all, or, you know, it can be a vertical or a horizontal, however you want to define a community. It, it can also be that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? No. So you mentioned earlier that there was some public-private um, partnerships going on in this city. How does that process go? Like, how do you get to that point where you're partnering uh, up with this city? I, I will have to answer that question afterward, okay. at the end. Okay, so we're going to do breakouts. So I'm going to take a a access to information. We have 30 minutes to do this. Uh, we have, um, so yeah, essentially uh, education, lifelong learning. Um, we got uh, industry, uh, employment, effective and open government, and smarter communities, and we're gonna do this for 30 minutes.